Hey guys, how you doing? Big John with J Custom Builds. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos and uh, hope you guys are having a great day. So I'm at a standstill right now with my brother-in-law, Softail. I'm starting to get all the parts here. I should have everything by Monday. And so in the meantime, I did the front wheel on blue and I'm in the process of cleaning up the back wheel and getting the back wheel on there. I got everything together. I got all the bolts together and everything. So I'm really excited to get this done. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So let's get going on this. So the first thing that I'm going to do to take this wheel off is uh, I'm actually going to take this little clip off right here with the screwdriver. I'm going to disconnect the shocks. So in order for me to disconnect the shocks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack the rear wheel up because there's a lot of pressure on it right now from the uh, shocks. And then I'm going to jack the wheel up by itself so that I can... I'm sorry guys, I'm kind of not feeling too well right now. I know I'm all over the place because I'm actually not feeling too well right now, but I just can't sit on that couch or sit in the house anymore. So I'm out here. I'm going to take my time and take it easy, but I am going to take this rear wheel off. First things first, I'm going to take this clip out. Don't forget to put that back in. You want to put that in a in a safe place. Now I'm going to take these bolts off. I loosened it up right now. I want to make sure that there's not too much pressure on it. Again, I think I mentioned this before. If it if the bolt is spinning freely, then there's not too much pressure on it. There we go. Not too bad. So I'm going to go take the other one off on the other side. <clears throat> Better if you use a shorter one on these, on the Ultras, because that, the or even on all the other bikes, because the the uh, saddlebag guard that the saddlebag sits on, railing is right in front. Wow, that was a lot of pressure, guys. That was a lot of pressure on that bolt. It's better if you do if you try to do that on the on the ground, I should have lowered the bike all the way down and took those off. So that's my bad. So now I'm actually going to uh, take that bolt off. That, uh, let me see if I can jack it up, see? When you disconnect the shocks, you're able to raise that bolt up so you can actually, I could even raise it up higher to get it out of my way. Not to get it out of my way, to clear this bar and the actual exhaust. So, it's a six point bolt. And this is a 36 millimeter. So I'm gonna use my half inch breaker bar on this. 36 millimeter six point, cause there is a lot of, there's a hundred, hundred pounds of, there's a hundred pounds of, uh, Torque on that. All right, so now it's loose. Not quite, but I can loosen it up with the socket. There we go. So you want to make sure that you remember where this was at. Man, that axle looks like it got chewed up a little bit. I don't think I took this wheel off ever because I didn't ever need to. It's actually my first time taking off this wheel. So the tire, let me show you guys over here. So you can actually see, I might have to go up a little bit or go down 
to for for the axle to clear that so i'm going to get my hammer my dead blow hammer so you want to grab your dead blow and that one looks like it's going to come out easy and then it's coming out pretty easy Okay, and again, you want to remember the way your spacer is in there, right? So, here's the spacer. I'm gonna clean this up, make sure it's uh, still good. Looks like, looks like some of the teeth. Yeah, looks like some of the teeth are gone on this. Wow, I'm glad I took it off. Could have, you know, made my, uh, back wheel that could be the reason why my back wheel had a little bit of movement all right so now i'm gonna let the tire down actually let me let it down just a little bit now that's gonna allow me to remove the belt lift that jack up more comes the belt once you got the belt off right now I can come to this side and lift the swing arm up so I could take the caliper out or you know what I might just there we go I'm gonna loosen that up so I can go up with the actual jack Hold on one second, guys. I'm trying to lift this tire out. Okay, here we go. And the tire is officially off. Here we go. bike back down now all right so that's it guys the wheel is out and uh, you can see that the brake caliper is still in there I'm gonna inspect that belt So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strap the bike really good right now and I'll show you what I need to do on this. I'm going to leave I'm going to leave the rotor on, but I need this because the one on the other bike or the one on the other wheel is too wide. These belts are like an inch, I think an inch and a quarter. And the one on the wheel over there is a lot bigger. I'll show you guys that when I get to that point. But there's blue, there's the rear wheel, there's the front wheel. I'm gonna rest, guys. I'm I'm actually beat. Yeah, all right, guys. I'm sitting down, man. I just I got nothing left. So um, I'll probably come out later on and try to finish this up. Or uh, that that just completely wore me out. So, anyways. Uh, I disconnected the shocks first. I should have put the bike down to take the, the pressure off of the shocks because this one on this side had very little pressure, but the other one, I had it strapped and I tried to put a floor jack underneath the tire and jack it up. It, that wasn't gonna work. That was pretty dumb. I won't be ever doing that again. So then I took the pin out. I took that bolt out right there. I'm glad I did that because the threads on the actual where the bolt was sitting when I when I went to take that off, that thing probably had a hundred and, it's only supposed to have a hundred 
pounds of uh, torque on it, 90 to 100. Honestly, guys, I, that bolt right there, they must have had 130, 140 pounds on that because that thing was gone. And then when I tried to take it off with my pretty big half inch breaker bar, it was on there, man. And then I, once I looked at the threads, I saw metal shavings, you know, from like thread shavings on the actual nut. And then when I took off the axle, you can see that the threads like midway or kind of toward me, when I looked at them at an angle sideways, they're gone. They're just shaved off. So this is the wheel that came off and the tire is eight years old. This is the new tire. So this is a 16 and this is an 18. And the 18 is a little bit taller. So you can see that the belt's fatter, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, you can see how bad this wheel is too, man. I mean, this tire, it started to, started to crack. And then if it, it's kind of hard to see, but you could see, you can see how it kind of has grooves in it. You can see them, right? That thing was all over the road when I rode it. And here's the new tire. And so I'm gonna swap the sprockets on that. And it's easier for me to do it this way. So I'm gonna actually use the breaker bar to break them because I don't know what the torque is on them, but I know that the torque, whew, it's on there. It'd probably be easier if I go at a lower level, like right there. Yep. Use your body weight, guys. It's so much easier. So I'm gonna just loosen them up like that. Try to keep the bar low so that you can actually use your weight. Kind of just stiffen my arm and going going down. And then now I'm going to use the gun to take it off. I'm going to use this baby, and this does not damage the uh, does not damage the bolts either. Sorry, Leo. on that let me yeah, my hammer you know and the wheel is very dirty too that'll make it real easy to take off I'll just leave that one like that for now and then I'll uh, loosen up this one while I'm at it so it's really easy don't try to go real high like if you try to, you could try to balance it. Oh, these aren't even on there tight. Yeah, these weren't even on there tight. So much easier when you got leverage. This one because this one's super this one's super clean here and this is the one that was on the bike so now this one right here you could just kind of rock back and forth now that I put some uh, lube in it this way too that doesn't want to come off what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a piece of wood so what you do the other side it is coming off there you go 
that one's off. So now what I'm gonna do, now these are, now these wheels are nice. Now what I'm gonna do is these wheels are pretty dirty. I'm actually gonna clean them up and that's gonna take me a while. So uh, I'll get back to you guys here in a bit. So hey guys, I, uh, I spent uh, some time on and off coming out here uh, wiping this wheel down. Hasn't been easy to clean. It's uh, a little bit of SOS pad here. I mean, uh, still wool. And uh, it still have some spots on here that I didn't really get a chance to clean with the uh, still wool. But like I said, I haven't had much energy lately. And it's just been so, so hard to get anything done physically for me right now. So it's been kind of rough. You're not even going to really see any of this because it's going to be covered by the sprocket. But I just wanted to clean this up a little bit before I put the wheel on it. Okay, guys, so I got the rear wheel all cleaned up. I wiped the white wall down. This rotor actually looks pretty good. It took me days to clean this wheel with uh, steel wool and uh, wire wheel cleaner. Yeah, I don't think it had ever been cleaned. 18 inch Italian made wire wheels, they're stainless steel. Beautiful, beautiful wheels and a nice uh, 140 70 V18. It's actually a little bit bigger than the one in the front. I have the uh, sprockets right over there. I'm actually going to bring one of the sprockets over here and mount it onto the wheel. So, all right guys, I'm just gonna inspect the, the teeth really quick, the actual grooves. And of course this sprocket is in excellent condition. The teeth all look really good on it. All right, let's see if I can get this girl on there. Make sure the holes are lined up first. All right. Beautiful. So now we're gonna get some blue Loctite. I've cleaned up the, the bolts already pretty good. I wanna put the flat part toward the back of the wheel so it could sit evenly here. So these bolts have the six lines. See the six markers? If it would have had three, it'd be 45 to 50 pounds. But since it has the six, it's actually 65 to 70 pounds. I would prefer to put these on with the ratchet, but I'm just gonna go slow with this gun. So now I'm going to get my uh, torque wrench and I'm going to go 65 pounds on them. All right, so now I'm at 60. I'm just going to go to 65. And the reason why I'm going to 65 is because you know I like to give it a little more. And you want to go in a star pattern as well. You want to go here, 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 and here. So this is gonna be the first, this is gonna be the last, right? So I'm gonna go here, 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 and here. You wanna skip over one every time. So that is 65. Go 
here. And here. All right, so now I'm gonna just, that was 65, I got all four, five of them. Now I'm gonna unlock it and just go up to 70. And that is 70 pounds. And again, we'll start here. Go here. 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 And finally here. You wanna make sure you got them all. I like to just go over to make sure I didn't miss any. And believe me, it's worth it. It's your safety, right? It's your life. All right. So that's that. And I ended up getting brand new spacers, spacer clip, nut, left side spacer. I ended up getting all these new because it's my bike, right? And I just uh, wanted to feel uh, safe and secure. And that axle had a little bit of wear on it. And I didn't, uh, I didn't want to deal with that. So Colony is all the stuff that came with it. Actually, this, the rear adjustment cam is uh, it's a V-Twin manufacturing. And the actual axle nut is is a uh, v-twin manufacturing as well this guy here is uh chrome that's exactly what i wanted so let's uh let's see how this fits inside this wheel actually fits really really good you always want to check that and the bearings feel great too so we'll go ahead and uh i'm gonna lower the bike down and get everything set up because I'm actually gonna put this wheel on the bike. So let's uh, let's get everything together here. All right guys, so first things first, I got the bike strapped in, I'm gonna loosen it up because I'm gonna actually have to go up. Okay. So right now it's currently in the, in the lowest setting, the lowest lock position. But I'm going to go up. That might be high enough right there. Let me, let me see. That might be high enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in at an angle, right? All right, let me show you guys what I did. So because the jack is more toward the center of the bike, all the weight with the rear wheel off, the rear wheel, actually the weight of the rear wheel is what pulls the bike down and keeps it level on the stand, right? So this is the center of the bike, but you notice the engine is more toward the front and there's a lot of weight on the front wheel, right? All that weight. So I didn't have to go up much. I didn't even have to go to the the second adjustment mark there because the bike tilted up. So I was able to get the rear wheel on there and I was actually able to get the belt on the rear wheel. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to bring the, you can see the rear wheel in there, I'm going to actually bring the bike down really slow and I took the caliper off of it as well. And I'm going to bring the bike really, really slow. I'm going to get the caliper back on the, on the bike as well and around the rotor. So again, you want to go super, super slow, right guys? Yeah. 
this guy back in there now. So I could try to get this back over and around. All right, looks like I got it in. Now I just need to go down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the spacers in there and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that really quick. Okay guys, so here's the old spacer and here's the new one. And then here's the smaller one that goes on this side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this one in here first. So you can actually move the swing arm. So let me show you really quick, guys. I'm gonna have to do this with one hand here. So that small chrome spacer is actually gonna go, it's gonna go between the brake caliper and the bearing. It's gonna sit in there. And here's the old one and the new one is right here. So you can actually bring your swing arm up and down right now because there's uh, there's actually no pressure on the swing arm, see? So I'm gonna lift it up to get that bearing in there really quick. So I'm gonna get axle grease all over this guy here. I'm gonna get this stuff all over this axle. It's, ba it ba it's basically anti-seize. You don't want to have this girl, anything seize up on you, right? So what I'm gonna have to do, guys, is because I don't wanna take the dang exhaust off, I'm gonna have to raise the, the rear wheel up. But remember, you know, just being honest, my back's not uh, too strong right now. I've been down for six weeks, seven weeks now, and uh, I don't have a whole lot of energy. So I'm gonna do my best to get that board under that wheel. To make it easier on myself, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the exhaust off. Cause it's just, uh, it just makes it a lot easier. You know, the exhaust is basically in the way and uh, this board out of the way because I really don't need it so on this particular year the bolt clamp on my uh, exhaust that's connecting to the header is a 3 16 and the reason why you wanted to get it pretty loose is because I'm gonna have to wiggle this off. The reason why you wanna get that over there pretty loose is so that you can get it back on and adjust it and move it around where you want it. There we go. Okay guys, to make it a lot easier for me, everything's lined up. I had to take this exhaust off and I took the other one off. And you can see that when you take the exhaust off, it's much easier to, to get this in there. And uh, just keep going. There we go. And it should be in on the other side. And it is. Double check that the spacer's in there. The calipers in there it's set all on the rotor now all we got to do is put the camber on this side the nut 
I'm going to wait till my brother Harold gets home so he can help me adjust it because you need actually two people to do it if it's not on the table. You know, I could do it, but is it going to be done right? You know, I uh, am not too proud to uh, ask for help or wait for help when I need it. So I'm going to get that camber bolt on there and then I'm going to start wiping some of this stuff off of there because I got axle grease everywhere. So see how easy it is, guys, to line stuff up when you're when you're not having to uh, So tired right now. Let me go up with the bike so we can actually start adjusting stuff. There it is. It's back on the lowest setting. It's safe. That goes like that. So that when you adjust the wheel, you adjust the tension on the belt. So this is the camber bolt, right? The camber spacer or washer. So when you adjust, see how it's got the, when it turns down like that, when you turn it out like that, it actually puts tension on the wheel. So the belt is not real tight right now. Actually do the final adjustment on the belt. You actually want the bike to be on the ground or the back wheel to be touching the ground. But uh, let me show you where we're at right now, guys. So we got that in there. And uh, the camber, you want it to be facing that little lip right there so that you can actually adjust the wheel. There's actually tension on the belt right now. It's close where I'm actually gonna want it. You can see that that other spacer is in there. I have a wrench right there just to, just to, uh, you can always go down. That's probably where I'm gonna want it right there. So now I just gotta rent, get a, a nice wrench and tighten up the other side, but I wanna make sure I do it when the bike's on the ground. And then you wanna give this bike, I think it's 90 to 100 pounds of torque. So, Again, I had to take the exhaust off so that I can get that beautiful wheel on there. Anyways, moving forward. So I got the back wheel on there, guys. I just need to adjust the belt. I'm gonna actually do that when my uh, brother gets home from work, probably like right around 6, 6.30. So I got the Willie G uh, covers on there. I got the Willie G collection. I got the pedal. You can see there the brake pedal. I got the uh, floorboards. I man, there. You know what? I used to really think that. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. You know, I've been buying all my parts and stuff because you know I was just a hardworking guy that was always trying to to get ahead to make his bike look the best. You know, and I was always around guys that you know I wasn't no way trying to keep up with the Joneses. Joneses by no means. Like whatever makes me happy and whatever I like, I do my best to work hard and achieve it, right? It took me years, guys. I've had this bike for five years and it took me all this time to be able to get the Willie G collection. And the only reason why I was able to get it is because I work at Harley and they give me really, really good deals. But man, I'm gonna show you guys. The, the quality on these is there's no, absolutely no comparison. I mean, this, you look at it and you go, yeah, okay, that's just a brake pedal. But you look at the quality on these guys, hold on a second. If you look at the quality on these guys, man, I mean, they're heavy, they're heavy duty. You know, they're made to perfection. I mean, they're just, it doesn't get any better than this, man. If you want quality stuff, if you want really good quality stuff on your bike, I know it's hard to get, it's hard to obtain, right? But I got the rear floorboards as well. I got one for the clutch. And so I've been wanting that collection for a long time. I uh, worked my ass off for it and waited a very, very long time. And I was only to get it, able to get it because I get up to 50% off on a lot of stuff at Harley and I get great deals, right? Not everything, but you know, on labor as well too. And, and I just love it. 
But if you guys are interested in, in doing any some kind of collection on your bike, just let me know, man. Let me know. If you guys have any questions on how to put stuff on or take stuff off, let me know. I don't know everything, but I do know a lot. And if I don't have the answer for you, I will get it. Right, Leo? See, even Leo knows. So anyways, I'm taking a break because I'm just exhausted. I'm winded. I'm still recovering. I'm still very weak. And... I'm probably going to leave that exhaust off until uh, my brother Hell gets out of work. So, Hey guys, a few hours later, I, uh, <laughs> I went in the house, man, and I was so exhausted from doing the little bit that I did. I took a two-hour nap. I was out until my wife got back. But anyways, uh, I just finished. I haven't torqued it yet. I put it down on the ground. I hooked up the shocks because you want to get it down on the ground. You want to get the weight of the bike. And... This, this nut right here is a little bit smaller. I have a 36, and uh, which is the size of the stock nut. And the 36 is actually uh, too big. So I might have to go pick up a 34 tomorrow, which I believe that's what it is. I thought I had one, but I don't. So I cleaned up all the white walls. I re-cleaned the rims, cleaned everything because I got, uh, got anti-seize or axle grease all over the place. But... Uh, um, just wanted to show you guys what she's looking like right now. So the sprocket's all on there. I got the shocks back on. There is a lot of tension on that because of the bike. See, when you put it down on the ground, when you have it in the air and you tighten up this, this guy right here, you put the tension on it. When you put it on the ground, it actually gets a lot tighter, but you want to go from the bottom and it's very, very tight. So I'll end up showing you guys how to do that tomorrow um i'm just exhausted it was a bear getting the shocks on there because i had to literally put a blanket on top of the bike and put my whole weight on the bike to get this side on there it's probably like a half inch shorter on this side than it is on that side so um but yeah i cleaned everything up man the brakes look good everything the spin with the wheel spins really really good and uh just wanted to show you guys she's not fully done yet but that's it I think she looks great. She looks like a different bike. Love those white walls and those wire wheels, man. All right, guys. So I got this back on. I put the exhaust back on yesterday. My uh, brother came over and uh, he actually helped me uh, torque the wheel. I held the one side over there. Well, he torqued the wheel. I did the belt deflection on it. Whatever the book called for, that's what I did the belt deflection on it. And... Uh, Calipers on there. Everything's on there. That chrome spacer is in there. The brakes were pretty much brand new. So I just threw them back in there. I got the exhaust on. I had to actually take off the, uh, the covers, the shields, because they fit on there so tight. I was, not, I, want, <laughs> I was unable to get the exhaust back on there without pulling these back. So... <clears throat> I got that on. You can see the new spacer in there. And the belts tightened up. I got this exhaust back on. And now all I have to do is uh, check the air on the tires. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Because I got them mounted in January. I think the first week of January. And something like that. And so I, I think they're fine. But I just wanted to make sure. You always want to keep 40 pounds in the rear tire and 38 in the front, 40 in the rear, 38 in the front. Check your tires as often as you can because the worst thing is for you to be riding on a low tire, get on the freeway, be going around a curb, and you just don't want that to happen. It can happen on the freeway or off the freeway. So anyways, uh, all right guys, so I aired up the tires and the rear tire was low. It had 32 pounds of pressure in it. I don't know why it would have gotten that low. So I ended up, uh, filling it up to 40 as i mentioned before you want to make sure that you keep you know like 40 on uh your rear tires and uh so let's get this in there ever planning on taking these bags off again so I mean 
portion. I'm not planning to, but. So I want to go a different, uh, a different grade speaker on here. These speakers are, they're rock for Fosgate. Yeah, and I paid a pretty penny for them, but they're not uh, good quality speakers by uh, far. So let's get you guys over here because now I'm going to actually start putting all this together again. I'm going to turn this as much as I could because I'm going to get in there really good. So I dropped off my... Uh, my brother-in-law's tires and wheels today for the for his bike right here and uh jim was actually pretty busy so he said that he will not be able to get to them until monday get this bag wiped down a little bit better this poor baby's been sitting for a while Wipe the rest down later. All right. All right, I'm gonna turn you guys off because I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna actually mount that amp. All right, guys, so what I did was I had Velcro here. You can see how it looks like crap there. And there's still some that are, no, I don't know. Maybe that was Velcro. But what I did was I just, the Velcro, the Velcro was keeping it out less than a quarter of an inch. It was just taking up a lot of room. There's not a lot of room in this bag. I know that that amp is overkill. Unfortunately, I was, you know, used to doing car stereos and I really never did bike stereos. This was actually my first one. And since it was my bike, I was kind of, you know, practicing with it and stuff. But anyway, so what I did is I drilled some really small hose and I screwed this board here to the, uh, to the bag. It's kind of tough getting these wires in here. There's a lot of wires to run. All these wires got to go back in here and get, get tucked in here. So I don't think I'm going to record that. I'm just really trying to get everything reconnected again and then get the bag on there. So once I get it finished, get the bag all on there and everything, then I'll uh, I'll just show a video of me completing it. Because I know you guys don't really want to sit here and watch me. It's going to take me about 20 minutes to get all these in, maybe even half an hour, and get everything zip-tied again. So I'm going to turn you guys off for now, and I'll show you the finished product. You know, this is a 2007. I love this bike. I don't have any plans or intentions on getting rid of it. You know, I hope I never have to. But uh, I really, really like this bike, man. I really, really do. So let's, uh, let me grab the key and see if she'll fire up. I don't want to start it in the air. So I'm gonna actually set it down. I already uh, aired up the tires, 40 in the rear. Let's see if this girl fires up. Hey guys, so that's going to be a wrap for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, I try to be as detailed as I could for you guys that, that want to change out your old wheel for a new wheel. I didn't have to do the bearings because it had the correct bearings and the bearings were fairly new. But I did have to put the uh, my old sprocket on there. Hey buddy. And uh, retorque the bolts. You know, you can reuse the bolts. I just reused my original bolts. But, you know, I could have got brand new ones from work. I think they're like 
they're not even that much. I think they're like, my cost is like five or six bucks for the whole, for the kit. And so, um, you got to pay attention to the torque. Always look through your, through your books so that you can uh, get the right torque specs on those uh, bolts and make sure you torque them in a star pattern to get that right. So other than that, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And, uh, I know that I have not been announcing my giveaway recently because the weather has been bad. And I think I mentioned, mentioned that I only sold three hats since December. The weather's getting nice. Things are starting to pick up. So listen, guys, I don't know if you guys heard of Tunnels to Towers. Do me a favor and look that up. It's basically for the first responders and our military vets who are injured, who have lost limbs, who have become disabled and no longer able to live, uh, you know, a normal life on their own or you know, for, for reasons like that, uh, people from 9-11 who lost spouses, they basically buy houses and have houses built, custom built houses for, for our veterans and our first responders. They ask for $11 a month for a donation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to donate $11 for every hat or t-shirt item that I sell. So right now they're $75. If I raise them up to 90, I'm going to donate $11 out of every sale. If I raise them up to a hundred, I'm going to donate $20 from every item that I sell. And that is going to go to injured first responders and veterans so that they can have their homes built. And so far they've, they've built, I don't know, like 600 and something homes for people. It's legit. Look it up. Tunnels to towers. And I'm actually going to start doing another charity with St. Jude's for cancer because um, I know that's for children, but I lost my dad to cancer at 54 years old and my wife lost her mom. I think she was like 64, 65 to cancer. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's very meaningful. So anyways, I'm going to start doing that immediately. So the next item that I sell, I'm going to donate $11 to Tunnel to Towers and, uh, you know, there's like, I think Marky Wahlberg and there's another guy from uh, Yellowstone. He's actually doing it as well. So look it up online and, uh, you know, I'm going to make contact with, with them. I'm going to make contact with another, some veterans that I know out, you know, not only here, but in SoCal and they do some work, some charity work as well. So I'm going to try to contact them. But if you're interested in winning one of my beautiful bikes, the 2009 that I've had for a year and a half now and the 2010 uh, Street Glide, Ultra Classic and Street Glide, all you got to do is head over to my website, jcustombills.com. You can see there's six different hats. I got gray and uh, black t-shirts from men all the way to from medium to 5X. I got medium, large and extra large for women. I have four different colors. You can go to the website and check those out. So if you're interested, I'll put quick videos of the bikes up there. Um, again, if you look at any of my videos, you can go back and watch the builds and check them out. And you'll see, um, I wanted to sell 200. I've already sold 103. I got 97 entries to go so we could give one of these bikes away. So let's do some charity work, man, for some good and get these bikes given away. Other than that, you guys always remember to ride safe. Take care in everything you do and God bless. Love you guys. Thank you.